I usually don't give a title to a sermon until afterwards because I never know which way the sermon's going to go. But, but I'm going to give this title now, mm. Made Nigh by the Blood of Christ. Ooh. Otherwise, mm. means I made near by the blood of Christ. Mm-hmm. So before we start, God. Mm. I want us to confess as a congregation and say this out loud. Mm. And I want us to say this, and I'll say it first time, and then we'll say it as a group. I am made near by the blood of Christ. And, uh, okay, let's, everybody. I am made near by the blood of Christ. Well, in Ephesians 2.13, in Ephesians 2.13, it says, But now in Christ Jesus... Ye who sometimes were far off mm. are made nigh by Jesus Christ. God. Otherwise, put it in our own language. Mm-hmm. But now, in Christ Jesus, ye were sometimes far off and are made near by the blood of Christ. Mm. The thing is, I like the first word, but... Mm-hmm. The word but says, you might think this other way, but this is a different thought. Mm-hmm. You might think that you got it all together and you're all that in a bag of chips My. and that you're all this, but it says but. But that now that we're in Christ, now things are different. Mm-hmm. Things are different than it was before you in Christ. Wow. And it talks about that you were sometimes far off. Well, mm. what it means that we were away from God. Wow. We didn't have God in our life. We didn't have Jesus in our life. We did we were not we we're living in the old man mm. or we live it, living in the physical fleshly world Mm -hmm. and our spirit man had nothing to do with God Mm -hmm. but we see that it says that because Mm -hmm. of Jesus sacrifice on that cross all the sweat all the bleeding and all the stripes and everything that he bled and was that perfect sacrifice perfect for us that we Mm -hmm. were far off before but we were reconciled to God back, back mm-hmm. through the blood of Jesus. Boy. So when we look at it, in the Old Testament, God made a covenant with Abraham. And with the covenant, there was a blood sacrifice of that covenant and because they circumcised the males. And that was the blood covenant. Yes. And what, 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 what is a covenant? It is a covenant that says God promises that you are protected, you are provided for, you are my child, and so forth, and I will look after you. Mm -hmm. Back then, it was if you kept my commands, commandments with Abraham. Mm -hmm. They were protected through the blood sacrifice of the circumcision. But then, now we have a new covenant Mm. that Jesus died for us, sweated sweated blood drops. Mm. Mm. He sweated in Gethsemane for us. He crowned of thorns on his head. Blood just came down his face. Took the stripes on his back. And you know it bled. And then the ultimate on the cross where he sacrificed his blood for us. But he overcame sin, death, and the grave through the resurrection. Mm -hmm. So our covenant is that if we believe him, he's our protector. He's our salvation. He's called us 
to something better. Mm. He's called us to eternal life from the day we accept Jesus Christ until God. he comes again. Mm. When that trumpet sounds, where we get our glorified body and we're clothed in his right, righteousness and yes. we remain blameless at the glorification. Yes. There'd be no more sin. But we have to understand that Jesus, to every believer, yes. is sealed by the blood of Christ. Glory. We are sealed mm -hmm. by his blood. Mm -hmm. That we are sealed as his child. Mm -hmm. We are sealed by his protection. Mm -hmm. We are sealed because it's a new covenant for us. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, we have to believe in Lord Jesus Christ and confess our sins. Mm -hmm. And say, Jesus, you're my Lord and Savior. Yes. Lord. Well, in Leviticus 17.11, Leviticus 17.11, it says, For the life of flesh is in the blood, but I've given, you, given it to you upon an altar to make atonement for your souls. Glory. Well, they're, whether they, oh, excuse me. I made the altar for your souls, for it is the blood that makes atonement for your soul. So this is Old Testament, but it actually fits us. Life is mm. in the blood. Mm. Life is in the blood. Lord. Even though Man had to do the sacrifice through circumcision under Moses, mm -hmm. under Abraham, and so forth. But mm -hmm. Jesus became the ultimate sacrifice in that circumcision of our soul through his blood. Oh. And so circumcision of our heart that we will be brought in atonement. Mm -hmm. And I like what it says, atonement. I like to change that set at one moment. At one moment, when you accept Jesus, you are made atoned. That are, all your sins are forgiven by the blood of Christ. In Colossians 1.20, Colossians 1.20 says, Having made peace through the blood of his cross, mm. By him to reconcile all things unto him. I say whether they be things on earth or things in heaven. Mm. So when we look at this, that look at this verse, and we have atonement and it's have given us peace through the blood of Jesus. God. Jesus paid that price so we would have peace or we would have that shalom, that word nothing's missing, nothing broken, completely intact and made whole through that blood that he did sacrifice on the cross that would bring us peace. A lot of times it seems like we lose our peace. Because of circumstances and this, and we get where we get our mind wonders and our our thoughts wonder and everything goes, seems like it's going awry. Mm -hmm. But he's saying that he is the ultimate peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. He is that peace that gives us the understanding, that peace that gives us that hope. That peace that satisfies our soul, that that is the peace that gives us sound mind and sound thinking, that is the peace, but it all happened at the cross. That ultimate sacrifice, that not only that it, he was for our peace, but he reconciled us back into his family, that we would have a relationship with God Almighty. That we will be reconciled. And it, what did it say? That he reconciles all things. He didn't say just, just certain things. If you're being good, 
Wow. You know, a lot of times people say, when I witness to people, I say, well, do you ever, uh, uh, if you die tonight, do you know you'd go to heaven? Some people say, well, I think I've been good. You know, I hope so. But it's through the blood of Jesus, that sacrifice that he did. It's them accepting that sacrifice, accepting him as Lord and Savior that makes the difference. Mm -hmm. He reconciles us back to God where sin kept us departed from God. Yes. He brought us back through the blood on that cross. But then it says, and I like this part here, that it says, having peace through the blood of the cross gives us the peace. Yes, Lord. And he reconciles all things to us, not just this and that, but all things to us. But it says, by him, who is the him? Through Jesus, who is our advocate, and the Holy Spirit directs our path. Mm-hmm. Whether they be things on earth or things in heaven. So what he did, that through the blood, that he's reconciled all things, and he's even on earth, that the gift of grace is ours. All that we need, that he will supply to us according to his riches and glory. He will do this, and he's reconciled it. All things, anything that we need on earth, he will also do. And we see, but then he has, it says, also in heaven. Praise God. All the gifts and the gifts of the Spirit, all that we need are stored up in heaven. They're stored up for us. And he wants to reconcile us to all the things that all those gifts, those free gifts, that unmerited favor, all that grace yes. that he wants to give us now. And it's all because of the sacrifice that he did for us. Praise God. Mm. Even though he was without fault and blameless. Mm. He did that sacrifice so that when we get to the place of glorification, that we will be out without fault and blameless. Because that blood of Jesus covers all of our sins. Praise God. It gives us forgiveness of our sins. Right. Well, we see that there are so many things that are stored up in heaven that we don't even have. <coughs> you look, there's no tears in heaven. But that, that, that's there right, here for so us. He re can reconcile that into our life that when we feel down and feel out, he is there to build us up. He's the one when you feel like nobody loves you. Uh -huh. You know he loves you. He reconciled us back to his love. Christ God. That when we feel weak, he gives us that joy. And strengthens us. Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Physically, we might feel like, I can't make another step. Or you might even be this, wake up in the morning and says, oh no. Oh Lord, it's morning. We need to get out of that habit and say, oh Lord, it's morning. What do you have for me? What do you have for me to receive and what do yes. you have me to do today? Yes. That's where we need our praise should be in the morning. Amen. As it says, early will I seek thee. Amen. Yes. Too Amen. many times we get up and we do our Lord. things and he's one of the last thoughts on our mind. Because mm. we got to get here or there or do this or do that. Mm. But if we thought, well, Lord, I praise you. Mm -hmm. I seek you this. Feet seek you first the kingdom of God. And then all these things are added unto you. Yes. And we see if we get up early and start seeking him, 
then things come about. Amen. Not only the things on this earth, which he is our total resource. Yes. But even things on heaven that are stored up for us, mm -hmm. he wants to give us. Yes. He wants to anoint our steps. Yes. He wants to show us our direction. Praise God. He wants to do all these things for us. Now we see here that we have earthly gifts and we have heavenly spiritual gifts that he gives us. Amen. And they're there for, and it all happened for how? By the blood shed on the cross. On the cross, amen. And then when he was resurrection, he gives us the power, the power here on earth to pursue what he wants for us. That he is ordained for us. That purpose that he has for us. He has all that. Well, in Ephesians 1, 7. In Ephesians 1, 7. In whom we have redemption through his blood. In whom we have redemption through his blood. We were redeemed. We were bought and paid for by his sacrifice. And what is the redemption gives us? The forgiveness of sins. And according to his riches and grace. Mm -hmm. According to his riches and grace. Mm -hmm. It's not our riches. It's his riches. And grace. Well I mentioned. There was a blood covenant. Abraham had the covenant. And they had to keep the law. But Jesus came to fulfill the law. Not that we're no longer under law. I mean, the law, the Ten Commandments, we're still supposed to do it. Yes. It's our protection if we do it. Lord. Because even if you're saved and you break and sin, you're opening yourself up for consequences on this earth. But he has provided us where we come to him. Not only forgiveness of sins, but forgiveness forever. Now, I mentioned that his blood covenant brought us reconciled back into his family. Yes. Brought us back to him to have communication and a relationship with him. But we have to realize this. As us going through this so-called life and going to from life and graduate to, to eternal life, mm -hmm. there are things that we receive because of the blood, because that blood covenant that he gave us, it brings us power. Oh, yes. He gives us power to overcome. Mm -hmm. It gives us the power and authority to defeat Satan. He's given us the power and authority over sickness. He's given us that power. And it all comes from the blood covenant he made with us at that cross and his shed blood. He also gives us victory. Victory. Because the battle is the Lord's. But we get to have the victory and have the spoils of the war. He's granted that to us. Lord. And also, here on earth through the blood covenant, because by his stripes we're healed. Mm -hmm. By the peace that passes all understanding. Mm -hmm. Because of the ridicule and everything and the chastisement he had on us. To give us that peace. That he also. Gives us miracles. God. Miracles from God. Mm -hmm. And. 
And we have to realize it's a miracle from, from God in our everyday life. A believer can have miracles in their life every day. And I really believe that there are miracles happening in each one of our lives every day. Amen. But we don't see them. Mm. But that's when we need to learn to praise God and say, God, thank you. Yes. That you have provided thanks for us. Amen. Thank you, God, that you have helped me to be an overcome by the blood of the Lamb. Yes. I thank you. And then what we need to do, say, Lord, Open my ears and my eyes mm. and my mouth. Mm. And open my ears to hear what you have for me. My eyes to see the direction and even see the miracles that I didn't even know existed. The things that you're performing, yes. that you've begun yes. <coughs> that good works. Amen. And will continue today in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And he also says that his eyes are going to and fro throughout the earth to see who he can prosper. So we see when we open our eyes and start acknowledging mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. that is good in our life Glory. and every opportunity he has and start thanking him it makes a difference. So the blood covenant that we say that he's going to recognize things, all things on earth and in heaven, we as believers, we have to realize that he brings all the power Glory. to us if we're willing to receive it and exercise it. Amen. Mm. That he gives us victory. Over the, even the little things in life. Yes, Lord. We usually praise God for the big victories we have. Mm -hmm. But you know, there's victories that we have daily. Yes. Daily. Some of us just getting up out of the bed in the morning is a victory. Glory. <laughs> you know, we have to see this. That we need to get yes. into the praise. Yes. And, and start expecting the miracles to happen in our life. Amen. We need to get an air of expectancy that God is not finished with <laughs> us yet, that God wants to perform things into our life, and he also wants us to submit to his power that he gives us the power to even to perform miracles in others' lives, that we are the instruments we got to get out of self and say, Lord, I die to self daily. Because you made that sacrifice on that cross. That's the reason why he says, take up your cross daily. And follow him. <laughs> but he's already done the sacrifice. We're just carrying that cross. That we know that he has, like he had. It's destiny oh, to yes. die for us. Yes. But when we carry his cross, yes. we have a destiny for what he has for us. God. Let us pray. Father God, we just come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the sacrifice you. of your son on that cross. And for the blood, because there's wonderful work and power in your blood. Mm. Father, we thank you mm. for the forgiveness of our sins. Father, we thank you for ordering our steps. Yes. But we thank you mostly that you brought us back to reconciliation that we can live a life yes. with you in it. That our life is made whole and we no longer feel empty. 
We thank you because it is all because of the blood and the sacrifice. Father, thank you again for just loving us and caring us so much that we can draw near to you in everything that we do, everything that we say, Everything we could think because the blood has made you near to us. Thank you. Father, we thank you that you're not far off, mm. that you're ever present in our lives. And thank you again for your son. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that directs us. We thank you that you loved us enough. We ask this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.